Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and welcome to another episode of Watch and Learn. In today's video, we're going to be talking about why you're not supposed to change the day and date of your watch between the hours of about 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. We say it all the time. I know I've said it a couple of times. Uh, it's written in the manual of your watch, more than likely. In a couple of brands, it doesn't make a difference, but the brands we're concerned with, you know, that we sell, the affordables, uh, they certainly are very concerned about it. Uh, and all we ever say is, you know, the date and day changing mechanism is starting to work at that time and you don't want to force it with the quick set uh, and possibly break something. So, you know, it's great to hear. It's good to know it. But how about why can't we do it? Let's see with our own eyes what's going on when we try to do that. So I'm going to take apart a watch. I'll show you how to get down to the movement. And then we're going to work under the microscope, uh, which I haven't done since I think watch and learn number three. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, I should be able to show you all the gears and the changing and why you shouldn't be forcing it at that time when things are starting to, you know, go into action. Uh, hopefully it makes a really good video. Um, for my own wrist check, I'm wearing a Squale 50 Atmos Blue, which as you know I adore, and a, a Seagull Mechanical Chrono. So uh, let's head on over to well, first the table and then the microscope to check out why you shouldn't be changing the day and date on that watch uh, between around 9 p.m. and 3 a.m. So for our example today, I have this white dialed Seiko 5 here. I've taken the bracelet off. This is another one of the watches from the Infinite Junk Bin. Uh, it does run. You can see it's running now. Change the time, pull it out one click, turning it clockwise changes the date counterclockwise changes the day. It's a two language wheel uh, like normal, but we need to take out the movement uh, that has the dial and the hand attached to it. And to do that, we need to remove the case back. This is a simple, uh, a simple spanner wrench does the trick here. Uh, there is a watch and learn that I did that shows you how to remove various case backs. Uh, this one I just loosened before I started filming. So I just need to loosen it and then we'll take it off and we'll do the next steps. So the case back is off here. You can see Here's the front of it, or the, the, the back of it, the part that sits against your wrist. Here's the inside, has a gasket. And now here is a view of the watch with the back off. You can see the movement, and it's like the balance is kind of moving. Um, like I said, this was uh, a watch that was in the parts bin, so who knows what's wrong with it. Uh, but So now what we have to do is we have to remove the crown and stem, and then we'll be able to take everything out of the watch and... I believe I might have shown this on a prior video also. For this Seiko, all we need to do is make sure the crown is seated all the way. So if you look right here, uh, there's a little nib right here. You push that down with a tool, screwdriver, or anything, anything hard and uh, you know small that you can get in there with. And at the same time, you know, push, push down very gently. At the same time, pull out the crown and the crown will release. So I'll show that to you now. And it's not the easiest to do for the camera, but I take the tool, I press that little thing down, and out pops the crown and stem. That's it. So now we'll be able to just take everything out of the case, the movement, dial, hands, one assembly. You know, sometimes you got to go in with a tweezers or a screwdriver and pry it out, but it comes out, and uh, we'll show that result next. And there you go, presto. So now you've got the you know, dial and hands, everything's attached, and the movement in the back. So I'm gonna lay this on a holder next, and then we'll remove the hands, the dial, and then uh, we could start the fun work. So now that the movement is in this holder here, so it's easier for me to handle, I'm actually gonna pop the crown back in, uh, and then we'll remove the uh, dial and the hands. Popping the crown in is merely, it's gotta find where it goes. And you just got to be a little bit easy with it, and you don't force it, and it'll eventually go. And there it is. I can pull it out two clicks, set the time, one click, day and date. Uh, and that's it. So to remove hands from a movement, it depends what you want to do with it. In this case, I don't care what's going on afterwards. I don't care about the dial. So I have a hand remover tool. Uh, you can see it here. It's a very simple tool. Uh, my bird has eaten it. Um, <laughs> excuse me. I had an umbrella cockatoo for about 20 years. She used to sit with me, and yes, she would eat anything that wasn't uh, metal. So, But this is a pretty cool tool. You can see you press it, and these two plastic feet come down, 
and then the jaws retract and it just pulls the hands right off. So if I cared about the hands, I would do it carefully. If I cared about the dial, I would put a piece of uh, paper down and cut it around the um, ar around the pivots that stick out so that I don't damage anything, but like I said, I don't care. So I'm just gonna put this down and that's it. The hands popped off, you can see one, two, three. I'm looking at a dial and then the dial on these it's got feet on the bottom and it just kind of sticks into the movement. I just got to find the spot. There it is. And the dial just peels right off. Back of a dial in this case, uh, it's like a brass dial. And it's got those two feet sticking up. You can see them. And those just go into little feet, uh, little holes, excuse me, here in the movement. So now the dial is off. And now the movement is in a movement holder. So you can see now if I pull the crown out one click, one way spins the day, one way spins the date, and if I pull out two clicks and I rotate the time, you obviously, well maybe if you have a very sharp eye and the resolution is good, you can see the center pivot is turning clockwise, and after 24 hours, the date wheel will advance, I should be getting there soon, and then the day wheel, there it goes, clicking over, and then the day, day goes twice, because it's a dual language wheel, uh, and that's it, so now, I have already gone ahead and removed a clip that holds this day wheel on. Um, it's a really, really, really tiny clip that needs to come off. So I'm going to remove it because I want to show you something. Here it is. So here's here's the front. Here's the back. Uh, you can see that black gear on it. I'm going to actually remove the white from that black gear because I want to put it back on and show you how everything works a little bit later in the video. Uh, but I just wanted to flip it over because I don't know if I'm going to do that uh, when I'm under uh, the microscope in, in a little bit. Uh, but you can see all the inner workings. It's, you know, it's pretty cool. I'm not going to remove the date wheel because removing the date wheel is far more involved, at least for me. More screws to remove more parts. Um, but you can kind of see all of the stuff um, that makes the watch work. So this is these are all the day and date change mechanisms. Unfortunately, you know, I think I really need to do a microscope to show it better. I mean, you get decent resolution here, but... There's some stuff going on with this wheel up here and these wheels down here that I think maybe the microscope would be better to um, a better to show. But uh, well, so let's um let's switch the perspective now and we'll uh, put it under the scope and, and hopefully uh, that gives a a better story uh, than this method. Okay, so here we are now. We're set up under the microscope and you might notice that something is a little bit different. Well, as irony would have it, or in a a twist of fate. The movement that I took out of that Seiko before, well, while I was setting it up under this very microscope, I went ahead and inadvertently twisted the crown, like I'm doing right now, and apparently it was in a bad position, and I wound up stripping one of the date change gears, namely this one, which is usually the gear that breaks, and I will, at the end, I guess I'll bring that movement back up and show you what happened to it. You know, so I, I said a few choice words, uh, and then I said a few more when I realized the camera wasn't even on yet because I was still setting it up. It would have been great to capture it, um, but unfortunately I didn't. So what I'd like to do, well, I, I took this movement out of an SNK 809. So the only difference is, is that the date wheel, as you can see, is white lettering on a black background as opposed to the inverse. But I went ahead and I removed that center day of the week section. And that is that little piece right here. You can see it. I just pulled it off of that center cog so that we can really get in on the um, on the movement some more. So I figure what I'd like to do is start with an overview of how the day and date change naturally, then show you how you quick advance them and why that can lead to trouble. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what happens when you advance the time naturally. So I've gone and pulled out the crown right here on the right hand side. Okay, so as we advance time forwards, a couple of things are happening. You'll notice in the center here, this wheel is moving clockwise and that's the hour and the minute hand. They're, they're moving clockwise because we're advancing the time forwards. And then also at the top left here, you'll see this black piece is also rotating clockwise and it moves uh, once in one revolution per day. It's got a bunch of teeth on it, and one of the one of the sets of teeth, their job is to advance the date 
Um, right now, you can see that tooth is going to engage. I'll zoom on it. I'll zoom on it in on it next, and it pushes the wheel one click, and the date wheel clicks over. And because the date wheel uh, has a detent in it that you cannot see uh, between each of the prongs, it goes and it advances the date one notch and one notch only. Um, and then it continues, which we'll do. In a, I'll show you in a minute how it advances the day of the week. What I want to do now is I'm going to set up for that date change again. I'm going to zoom in on, use my tweezers, uh, this area right here so you can see what's going on. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, why don't we go over the day change? I think that's, that's easier. So watch these two teeth here. I'm going to fast forward the video. So now watch these two teeth. One, two. And you'll see that they start to engage that center wheel that had the day of the week on it right after the date is done moving. So the date moves, snap, and then the day of the wheel, the day of the wheel, the day of the week wheel snaps once and snaps twice. And it does that twice because, again, it's a two-language wheel. It flips to the alternate language first, and then it goes back to the original language. Uh, if it doesn't look like that center wheel is moving, it is. Um, it just moves so fast. Uh, you can, you know, use your eyes and check the location of these uh, mold dots, and you see that they actually are moving uh, <clears throat> counterclockwise uh, with the date. So, like I said, now I want to zoom in first on this area here, so you can see what is going on uh, with the date change. Okay, so now we're zoomed in really close on that on that date wheel. And I want to show you a couple of things. I'll use my pen on the screen because I, I can't really point at the movement anymore. I've, I've, the, the scope is too close to it. We have this tooth here, which is opposite number 16 on the date wheel. And then we have this tooth from the gear that's moving clockwise. It's This is going to engage this and push it up. So I'm going to try to hold this as still as possible. And there we go. And rotating and it hits it there it goes you can see it's giving it a good push and when it gets far enough it snaps it snap forwards okay so that's pretty cool right so now let's do the same thing and we'll go we'll zoom on over to the uh, day of the week wheel okay so now we're zoomed in on the day on where the, the day of the week wheel sat it was right here the center is down in the bottom right of the monitor and then I've got the two prongs of the day advance that little lever are here so whoops so what's gonna happen is this is gonna hit this and then this is gonna hit this now this me this wheel once it snaps moves really fast so watch this piece here that little that little notch in the tooth or that little mold piece or I assume it's a mold piece um, so you can watch it move. So here comes the first hit. So now you're on the alternate language. And then about an hour or two later, here comes the second hit. Now you're back to your original language. So that's how it works. So let's zoom back out again and, and just see what we did. So let's look at it again, just really close. So we were, again, we were watching this wheel and how a prong hit the date change wheel. And then how these two prongs hit the day change wheel. So that's great. Um, so now we know how the movement advances day and date. Now, how does it work when you do the quick change? Well, for that, we're going to look at this area here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is shove the crown in two clicks and pull out one. And as I rotate, you can see that brass gear rotating right here. See, counterclockwise, clockwise, as I spin it. And then in here, you see a little white gear, the one I broke before, uh, right here. So as I turn the crown clockwise, I am turning that white gear. It's turning clockwise, and it is hitting these prongs you know, that we hit before over here. It's hitting them over here and advancing the date manually. Oh, pretty cool. Spin it the other way. Gotta love designers, engineers, whoever thought of this one. When you spin it backwards, the wheel is not on a fixed pivot. It actually floats back the other way. It's plastic, nice and lubricated, and it hits this wheel. This wheel spins this wheel. All, again, very nice. Check that out. See? Clockwise date, counterclockwise day. Is that awesome how that works? Yeah. I mean, so cool. And so cheap. <laughs> 
I mean, there's no, you'd think there's like a big switching mechanism. There's nothing. Uh, it's all really, you know, I, I guess, just friction, gravity, physics, call it what you want. Uh, pretty cool. So let's, um, let's see now what happens, right, when the date is going to change. And then we go and force a day change. So let's do that. So let's pretend it is coming up to 1130, midnight, whatever the case may be. So I'm going to advance the time and get it so that that, that prong that we looked at before is just going to hit the wheel. And there it goes. I'm going to zoom in back on that area again. There we go. And then what I'm going to do at that point is I'm going to manually advance the day and the date. Or in this case, just the date. Okay, so now here we are, and you can see, you see that little wheel, how it's going to hit that. I'm, I'm moving it back and forth right now just for the camera. Um, it's hitting the tooth. Okay, so now they're engaged. We're definitely getting ready to do a date switch over. Let's now pretend like we're going to do what we're not supposed to do. We're going to pull the crown out one click, and then we're going to try to advance the date. Ready? See what that next prong is doing? pushing that lever down out of the way. It's kind of a little protection, a fail safe, call it what you want. Um, I don't like it too much. P plastic paper clips don't usually last forever. And that's basically what this is. It's, a, you know, you're bending the plastic. What you want to do is be at say 3 a.m. or so, get this thing out of the way. And then when these prongs come by, they don't touch it. So likewise, the same thing is going to happen to the day of the week. So now we've headed on over to the day of the week, and you can see we're actually mid-cycle. We've switched from one language, and now we're getting ready to switch to the other language. And as I force that change over, you see what that's doing? Same thing, bending it just like it was a paper clip. And that black gear, both these black gears, they're plastic. You know, you do that. You do this ad nauseum, or something doesn't get out of the way like it's supposed to. It gets stuck on a burr. I mean, these are molded plastic parts. You, you know, there's a, a snap, snap in your future, uh, like there was in mine not too long ago. So let's zoom in on where the where we're switching the gears and just take a look at what's happening there, because I don't think we did that in close up yet. So we'll fix the depth just because we can, and you can see it's a brass gear that's attached to the crown and the stem right here. So this is rotating in and out of the monitor. It's hitting this brass gear here that has a pivot right there. Ready? See that happening? Okay, so let's move on now to where the plastic gear is. And this is our friend that we broke. There's that plastic gear moving back and forth. I mean, it's still working right now and it's engaged in that other plastic gear. So just think for a minute if you were to advance the day and the date on your watch and you broke, let's say, this plastic gear, can you see what a pain in the butt this gear is to change? Besides taking the movement out of the watch, which is the easy part, removing the hands, eh, not so difficult, removing the dial, you know, now we're, don't forget everything has to be put back together when you're done. Now you got to remove plates, more screws, more springs, everything else just to get to that three cent little piece of plastic. Um, and, you know, that gear, this gear, whichever one might be, you know, one of them is going to snap eventually if you keep changing the day and the date uh, when you are not supposed to be. See that? So what I'd like to do now is bring up the movement that I did destroy. And let's see if we can um, figure out uh, what happened to that little wheel. Because I have not looked at it yet under magnification, so I think it's going to be pretty cool. So now here is that other movement. And now here, uh, you can see it. Do you see it? I'm doing the same thing with that movement that I had before that I took out of the little white Seiko. The, right here, this, this tooth is missing. I actually snapped it off with this gear. I hit it, boom, knocked it off. Let's see if we can, um, I really don't care about this movement. I'm going to see if I can um, move this gear over so we can see the missing part and maybe uh, lift this spring that's here. Okay, I got it. I was able to move it over and I got that spring out of the way. Take a look. Look at that, missing a tooth. You see that tooth that's missing? Like in like a seven-year-old's mouth with his two front teeth gone. We are missing this little sprocket or prong of the gear that stuck out right here. And it would engage uh, this gear here. Uh, it's probably somewhere in the movement. I could probably find it. See, see, so this works, right? Works and stop. 
doesn't work anymore. And then uh, same thing with the other way. So that's it. That's what happens. Um, <laughs> I'm glad I was able to break it. I'm sorry I wasn't able to do it on the camera, but uh, that's what's going to happen. So anyway, I think that's enough for now. This has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing you why you should never, ever, ever change the date between the hours of 9 p.m. and 3 a.m. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so yet. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below, and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.